Welcome back. I'm Bob Kirkpatrick with today's local sports. The Moses Lake Chiefs' hopes of capturing the Big Nine League title took a huge blow with a 13-10 loss to the visiting Wenatchee Panthers Friday night. The game saw a little scoring from the league's top two point producers as stout defense and missed scoring opportunities held each other at bay the first 12 minutes of play. Wenatchee hit Pater 90 seconds into the second quarter on a seven-yard dash by running back Isaiah Brant Sims to go up 7-0. The Chiefs' Jordan LaSalle punched it in from eight yards out on second and goal to tie the game 7-7 and end the first half scoring. The Panthers went on a seven-minute drive to push the pigskin to the Moses Lake 18 to start the third quarter of play, but the drive stalled when Garrett King's 35-yard field goal attempt bounced off the left upright. Moses Lake took its first lead of the game on a 32-yard Ren Riley field goal to put the Chiefs up 10-7 with two minutes left to go in the quarter. Wenatchee converted an Easton Castro fumble in Chiefs territory to three points on a 41-yard King field goal to start the fourth quarter of action to tie the game 10-all. Moses Lake had possession at the Chiefs 33 with three minutes left in the game and moved the ball to the 44 on a fake punt by Brooks Milbrandt. His efforts were all for naught as a holding call coupled with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the play pushed the ball back to the Moses Lake 27. The Panthers got the ball back with 21 seconds to go. Two plays later, Wenatchee was knocking at the door at the Chiefs' two-yard line with two ticks left on the clock. The chip shot field goal from 19 yards out by King was true, and Wenatchee escaped with a 13-10 win. The Panthers at 6-1 hold a one-game lead and the tiebreaker over the 5-2 Chiefs with two games left. Moses Lake, with a slim one-game lead over Eisenhower, must win one of its last two to nail down the number two seed. The Chiefs hold the tiebreaker over the Cadets. Moses Lake is back, at, is, at, is at Davis on Friday, and then ends the regular season at home against the Eastmont Wildcats November the 8th. Well, Dalton Ballantyne ran for 137 yards and four touchdowns and a dominant Tiger defense returned two interceptions for scores to catapult Afreda to a 62-18 home win over the Grandview Greyhounds Friday. The win moves Afreda to 5-2 in the CWAC standings and into a tie for third place with Prosser. The Tigers face the Mustangs on the road Friday. Afreda needs to beat Prosser and West Valley November the 8th to nail down the final playoff spot for the upcoming district tournament. The Quincy Jacks suffered a gut-wrenching 35-34 loss at home to the Okanagan Bulldogs in Caribou Trail League action Friday. Quincy down 35-28 in the fourth quarter, nearly pulled out the game on a late score by Connor Trevino. But the Jacks' two-point conversion failed to give Okanagan the win and make the Bulldogs the number two seed for the district tournament. Quincy at 3-3 three three in the standing still has an outside chance of making the playoffs, but needs to knock off league-leading Kashmir Friday to get in. Well, the Warden Cougars turned back Kiona Benton 34-24 at home Friday to pick up the team's first win of the season. Warden came close last week in a 27-24 road loss to Columbia Burbank. The win over the Bears puts the Cougars at 1-5 in the 1A SCAC East Conference with one game left to play. Warden ends the season at home against Natchez Valley Friday. Joe Cutchell threw for 461 yards and five touchdowns and rushed for 90 yards and a score to lead the Soap Lake Eagles to a 44-28 win at home over the Pateras Billy Goats. The win has the Eagles clinging to the hopes of making the postseason play. But in order to get to the dance, the Eagles need to beat Intiat at home Friday and have Almira Cooley Hartline drop its last game to Odessa. Sophomore quarterback Dallas Isaac set a school record rushing for 450 yards and nine touchdowns, and Almira Cooley Hartline ended a two-game losing streak with a 72-26 thrashing of the Welpinant Redskins on the road Friday night. The win improves the Warriors to 2-3 and three and gives the team a slim chance of qualifying for postseason play. A win on the road at Odessa Friday will get ACH in the playoffs. And finally, Afreda Girls Soccer dropped its first match of the season to West Valley 1-0 at home Thursday. The loss to the Rams put the Tigers' record at 8-1. Afreda finishes the regular season in second place in the CWAC standings and are the number two seed for the district tournament October 31st. The Tigers will receive a first round bye and host a second round loser out game November 2nd at 1 p.m. 
Well, that's it for sports. We'll be right back after this.